Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelved. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. So when I was growing up, I was a big fan of cartoons. That's basically how I spent every day that I wasn't at school was watching cartoons. Um, You know, big fan of like the Nicktoons and Cartoon Network was basically my home and my babysitter for a long time. Eventually, I became a teenager and I started to branch out in my TV watching and I discovered Dragon Ball Z. Now, I'm not like the biggest anime fan. There are some I like, kind of a handful, but uh, Dragon Ball Z was one that I was addicted to. Um, Easily my favorite of the genre. And I think a lot of people, it's the one that is probably most familiar over here in the States. I feel like between the show and how big of a fan base it had and just like kind of the merchandising, it's the one you can go into a store and probably stumble on something Dragon Ball Z, whether it's the movies or the TV shows on the shelves, maybe an action figure in a store, collectible cards. I feel like it's just more in the popular view of in America in particular, you know, where I'm from. And, um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was hooked. I watched it every day after school. I recorded it on VHS tapes. I had so many blank VHS tapes just full of Dragon Ball Z episodes. And it all started when like, I kind of knew about it and I'd kind of seen like it was playing on like late night adult swim on Cartoon Network. And, um, you know, I, I was aware of it and I was kind of enjoying it. And then my friend started telling me about like, dude, eventually Goku, he like, he gets gold hair and he goes Super Saiyan and it's fucking awesome. And I'm like, well, that sounds cool. So, like, I kept watching, like, I, that's when I started, like, kind of watching on a regular basis. Like, I got to see the Super Saiyan thing. And then, you know, the rest is history. I was just hooked. I watched the show to the end. I play all the video games. And, like, still to this day, I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. You know, I kind of hadn't thought about it for, you know, a few years. And then recently I kind of started getting back into it again. I... I have all of the manga, the books. Um, I've recently reread the whole series. So, I mean, I'm still into it. Um, but, you know, needless to say, I've I always wanted a Dragon Ball Z movie. I was like, oh, why can't somebody make a movie of this? And lo and behold, in 2009, I believe it was, we saw the release of Dragon Ball Evolution. And it was... Something I was excited for. Um, I remember when I saw the first trailer, I was super excited. I couldn't wait to watch it, pulled it up on YouTube, and once it was over, I was curious. <laughs> um, it just, you know, it is what it is. Hollywood took something that was beloved, and they hired somebody to write a movie and this somebody just didn't have any interest or love for it. And it it was, it was disappointing. The movie came out and it was very terrible. There are very few good things I will say about the movie. I do say it on the podcast, what I do actually like about it, but it's not very much. So cut to now. Um, I get the idea for this podcast and I'm kind of just like, looking for scripts, what can I talk about? And I'm like, oh, I, I read on the like IMDb trivia that there were some things that were different in the Dragon Ball script. I'm like, I wonder if I can find it. Like, So I Google it and very quickly find the script. And I see that like right on the cover page, the script is just named Dragon Ball Z. So like already it's a little different. And I read this thing, and I'm like, oh man, we fucking have to talk about this movie. So the script is wildly different from the movie. Like there's there's a few connective tissues that you can see how it became, but it's very clear studio interference really changed this movie. That's not to say that the original script is good. I will say it's probably better, but it it still would have been a bad movie. It probably would have been a better Dragon Ball movie, but still just a bad movie overall. And then the writer has since come out and apologized. It's something he was pushing around the blame for years and eventually was like yeah you know it was a money job and I did the work and turned it in and washed my hands of it and it shows when you read the script that like he he put it he did his homework he clearly read all the books or he watched the whole series and he he got everything in there to varying degrees of success mostly no success but uh it, it's in there and it's different and it would have been more recognizable as Dragon Ball cuz Dragon Ball Evolution is not recognizable as being from that property at all. But um I wrote my closest 
Dragon Ball fanatic friend into this podcast. And uh, he he's probably even more into it than I am. He watches all of the series. He's watched them all in English and Japanese, which is something I can't even do. But um, I, I should definitely start out this podcast by saying he's a very busy guy. He run, He's a wrestler. He runs his own wrestling company. So his weekends are usually pretty busy. We both work the same full-time job, which has a lot of hours. And he he didn't have time to read the script. I gave it to him, like, you know, months in advance. And he, he was kind of trying to peck at it. And just he just wasn't having time. So I'm like, you know what? I'll read the script. You watch the movie. And we'll we'll talk about how different it is. And, and you know, it, I... I I definitely still really enjoy this episode, but I just, I just want that to know to be known. He he didn't read the script, but I still think we got some great conversation out of it because they are so different. And I will I will say he had a few drinks before we did the show as well. But uh, I still think it's a great episode. But I just want you guys to know that we may come back and revisit this one because after talking about it, he did say he wanted to read the script just because it's it's interesting. And I think as any Dragon Ball fan, you sh- they should read this because it's so different. And I would have been curious to see what this movie would have been. But um yeah, so here's me and my buddy Nick, a couple of Dragon Ball freaks. We're going to talk about Dragon Ball Z, which became Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, I want to get stands. That's what I keep saying like every episode, but I want to get stands. Yeah, stands are probably not that expensive either. No, I'm probably getting them for like 10 bucks. But uh, who wants to spend the money right now? Fuck it, I just bought a game that's obsolete. So, <laughs> I mean, I do that like every week. I stop at GameStop and uh, browse the PS3 section just to see what I can get for like 5 bucks. Um, Alright, so I gave you this script... Like a month ago? <laughs> a month and a half ago? And uh, it, it wasn't getting read. No. You're, you're a busy guy. <laughs> uh, you and Birdo, both. Um, so I figured I'll read it. Just have you watch the movie, which you did today. It's more, more, more to my speed. <laughs> yeah. So I have not seen this movie in probably two years, maybe more. For some reason, I own it. Um, don't know why. I bought it when it came out without, I think I'd already seen it and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. Maybe it'll grow on me. I had a feeling like, well, first off, let me give you a very re- well resounded, I mean, that's a real word. Uh, fuck you for making <laughs> me watch this movie. I should have watched. I mean, I had to read this, which oh. might be worse when we get into it. I was just... Like, I wanted to blow my brains out. Look at it this way. That movie, we looked it up, is 88 minutes long, which is already an immediate red flag when a movie can't even make 90 minutes. And the script took me, like, a week to get through. So, in a way, I probably had it worse. God. But you know what? Like, I remember watching this for the first time, and... I don't even remember my first time watching it. I remember it. thinking, wow, this was not good. This was, as as a Dragon Ball Z, like, Fan, lifelong fan. Yeah, it was not. Which a is Dragon... exactly why I chose you. You're me, and you are easily the two biggest Dragon Ball fans in there. It was. It was not a Dragon Ball Z movie by far. No, but... I mean, it, for one, it's a Dragon Ball movie, but it's not even a Dragon Ball movie. Z is the sequel. Well, you know what I mean, like yeah. the franchise. Um, just, I had. I was thinking, wow, like you know, maybe this movie might have the same kind of effect as like a ready to rumble did on yeah. me as where i was like you know what it's not a good movie but, but i it's, enjoy it but it's i love it it's it's one of my favorite movies of all time. yeah we were talking about ready to rumble the other day it's a, we both agree it's a bad movie that we love yeah and there's a lot of movies that are bad movies that i enjoy the hell out of like any of the chronicles of riddick movies <laughs> except the first one i think people generally like the first one but um yeah so i remember seeing the trailer for the first time and thinking that like this does not look good but the trailer didn't show a lot and i'm like maybe it still has a chance and then i watched like a bootleg copy when the movie finally came out Mm -hmm. i think it was still in japan and i watched like a japanese subtitled one and i was just like what the fuck (laughs) like how did this movie 
come out the way it did from a director who claimed to be a huge fan. Okay, well, can we start off by saying that the the movie starts with a like like very cliche back in the day, yes. two thousand years ago, yeah, which is present in the script as well. Which is ter- I hate that. Like, I mean, sometimes it's okay, but at this in this instance, I just yeah. it was very annoying. Anytime I come across a movie that does that. I try to remember one that did it well, and I'm always hard pressed to find one that I can look back on and be like, "Oh, what's a movie that starts with exposition at the beginning that was actually good?" And yeah, can you think of one I right now? Because I can't. Um, yeah, I an so. immediate bad sign. So the writer, so I, I read the script, which is just straight up called Dragon Ball Z, and then you just watched the movie that it became. The writer Ben Ramsey has actually been out there apologizing for this over the last year. Like for a long time, he Good. was he yeah he should be apologizing. So so for a long time, he was out there kind of pushing the blame on other people, like oh, it was the studio, it was the director, and blah blah blah. Um, recently, he came out and was just like, "Look, I took it as a money gig. I didn't really know Dragon Ball, but it's very clear he read or watched all of it because it's all in the script. Think of something that's in the movie that was not that was from Dragon Ball that was not in the movie." That was wait what? Think of something from the show or the manga that was not, Dragon Ball that, that was, was not, not in the movie in, that was not present in the movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean they had Piccolo work like he oh him and his minion Ozaru which is that, yeah that was not a thing ever all in the script. Um, a little different. Piccolo's a little different. Like who like what's a character that was in Dragon Ball that was not in the movie? That was not in the movie. I mean, Oolong was in... He's in the script. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess... I mean, the turtle wasn't... That, wasn't the turtle's the not in the script. <laughs> the, turtle, the turtle's not getting any love. No. I like um, turtles. Um, <laughs> who else was not? Like, wh- who's a major Dragon Ball character? Oh, Krillin. He's in the script. Okay. Um, Poir is in Poir. the script. And that would have been such an easy thing for fucking for them to do. Like when when Yamcha appears in the movie, just have him with a cat. Yeah, but which is that would exactly have been what it is in the script. Literally all of it. It didn't um, have to talk or anything. The power pole is in the script. It's in the movie. Kinda. But the the actual power pole, they refer to it as such. Okay, and so they, they, they give it, it they give it some love. The flying nimbus is in, in the, the script. script. It's kind of insane everything that was crammed into the script. So, like, right from the beginning. Um, so, the script, as far as, as I'm learning from you, was a little bit more closer to the script Dragon is, Ball. So, le- look at the beginning of the movie. Goku's in high school, which immediately is a bad sign. Um, <laughs> the classroom scene in particular is almost identical in the script, but there's a lot more talk, which you reminded me today, that they actually name drop the Namics in the script in the mm-hmm. movie. And I like as I'm re- so the whole thing of the script is Dragon Ball, the story of Dragon Ball. Like the story they tell you in the beginning about like the voiceover stuff tells you. That's like in in the script it's implied that that's a story everybody knows. And it's like a board game and a video game and like Dragon Ball is like basically fucking Dungeons and Dragons in this world. And some people believe it to be true based on a real story, and some pe- most people like don't. how we have Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, it'd be like if Dungeons and Dragons really happened, and, we and to were just us like, nowadays, oh, it's a game. yeah, to us nowadays, it's a board game. Okay. Like there are constant references to a Dragon Ball game in like story in the beginning of the script. Goku has like two friends in high school that he straight up kills at one point. <laughs> he just kills them. <laughs> and, intentionally, or so. The movie starts with, like, Piccolo killing Grandpa Gohan. Okay. Which and it did not happen in the ma- manga. No, no. And in the script, Piccolo's non-existent until the end. So the whole thing... Oh, name a villain from Dragon Ball that was not in the movie. Emperor Pilaf? He's in the script. Duh. Emperor Pilaf, Mai, and Chao are all in this movie from the very beginning. Okay. They well, this... don't do anything for a long time. So here's here's where they kind of take it a little different. Pilaf, I'm, I'm going to just kind of skip ahead a little bit to the end here. Um, Pilaf is a Namek in disguise. That's... And the whole, and so is Mai. And that's why she's able to shift, shape, shift forms like she does in the movie. 
So that was Mai in the movie then. Yeah, that was Mai in the movie with Piccolo. Do they ever call her Mai? Like, no, I don't think they ever. They never ever say her name. No, they never call her. She doesn't Miami. even like speak. Like she, two lines. Yeah. Although I, a uh, quick pause on that. You talk about how she shape shifts. I didn't at first. I didn't realize that she shape shifted, and then I was like, "Are these motherfuckers so racist that they literally <laughs> just mixed up the two Asian girls in the movie?" <laughs> no, I mean there's there is a change there. It's it's all mostly in the hair. I was um, just like, you gotta be kidding. Yeah, like, she, they never name drop her. There's character posters out there that say Mai, and, like, she's credited as Mai. Uh, but this, they have Mai and Chow, who Chow was the little dog. And this, he's like, I see, I got confused, because in the beginning, I thought he was, like, a robot. But then at the end, he, like, takes off his, like, costume to reveal he's, like, a wolf thing that Yamcha kills later by throwing it into a Piccolo's Blast. So the whole point of this script is they want to get the uh, Ma, Pilaf and Mai and Chow want to get the Dragon Balls to resurrect Piccolo. Because in the story, Piccolo was a great destroyer with Ozaru. Sure. He straight up calls Goku a Satan and tells him what he is at the end. Like, this thing is all over the place. I'm like... <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of shit going on in the movie that it was like... uh like they they talk about like oh like Piccolo like thousands of years ago into yeah. the future uh, and there's a, they keep referencing it like a lot of the stuff between like Goku and Bulma is the same like the relationship they sure. have actually no they create a hardcore love triangle between Yamcha Goku and Bulma that is in the script yeah that is Ooh. not in the movie and not from the manga yeah um but like they they talk about how he like Piccolo was uh like sealed away with with uh. Basically, the evil containment wave. I, they, guess. I mean, they don't, don't they call it the Mafuba? And, yeah, yeah, which is the name that is the name of it in the manga. Yeah, um, and they're like, oh, he was sealed away, whatever. And then, yeah. like, cut to the movie, like, he's just like he's just in, there. He's just in a, in a flying ship. Like, like they, there's no like like him like escaping from his. This is a question thing. I actually wanted to ask you. Now you just watched the movie; it's fresh in your mind. Mm-hmm. What was Piccolo's plan? Why was he seeking the Dragon Balls? They never said. I was literally thinking about that the other day, and I'm like, I'm going to ask him this question. They, 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 they never said. He they, just said, we will gather the Dragon Balls, and then when the Blood Moon arises and the Eclipse, Ozoro will be released. And, and then, why? Like, that was it. That was all he said. Okay, and so Goku is Ozaru, He's who he's like a 12-foot ape instead of like the 50-foot ape that they are in the thing. How is this 12-foot ape going to destroy the world? Like, I don't know. <laughs> for one, the, the movie is so different from the script. Because the script, you can tell the guy doesn't give a shit about Dragon Ball. But he at least put forth the effort. Every The Ox shit. King is in the script. Yeah. Chi-Chi is in the script. Oolong is in the script. Who's a fucking shape-shifting pig in the cartoon. In this, he's an actual smoke monster that they just kill with a Kamehameha wave. Um, they just kill everyone in this yeah. movie. So they do they they also add like a huge giant robot fight in the beginning where go like so like B- goku and bulma kind of hook up in the beginning it's very similar to how it is in the movie his grandpa gohan is dead mm-hmm. which we find out later that he's actually the one that destroyed the house because he became a, so when he he goes to the party and there's no okay. fight at the party like there is in the fucking movie like the high school stuff in the script is very toned down it is so this the high school stuff in the movie is so cringe it's i'm just like God. The fucking scene in the class, the classroom scene to me is the epitome of how fucking terrible that movie is. Like he looks at Chi Chi and has the daydreaming sequence and blah blah yeah. blah. There's like another girl in the movie who doesn't matter. She's gone in the first ten seconds, and then Chi Chi comes in with the Ox King later, and they immediately fall in love, and it makes no sense. But um, yeah. So like he, so we find out later in the script that when he was on his way home, he be, from the party he became Ozaru. Because he looked at the full moon, mm-hmm. and he killed his two friends, like, uh, okay. and then he thinks he kills Gohan. So Pilaf shoots him with like a memory gun because apparently that exists, and so okay. it gives him this flashback of him killing his friends as Ozaru. And then Roshi ends up showing up at the end because like we believe Roshi to be kind of out of commission at this point after the fight with Oolong. Mm-hmm. And um, he hits Goku with memory powers as well, because apparently he has that. God. And then shows that Goku didn't actually kill Grandpa Gohan. He only killed his friends, which I guess is okay. Oh, it's okay. He doesn't seem to care. And then they show Piccolo and Mai showed up. and Or not Piccolo, but uh, Pilaf and Mai showed up and killed Grandpa Gohan. 
So that made no fucking sense. Like, there was a point where I was reading the script and I was like, this would have been a bad movie, but it would have been a better bad Dragon, movie. A better Dragon Ball movie. Yeah, because it's all there. Like... I mean, they, they really embellish some stuff, but, like, the, the, you could at least look at it and be like, the characters are there. Elements of the story are there. Like, they get, she gets attacked by a giant bird that Goku jumps up and fucking hits with his power pole straight out of the manga. Okay. Which is, like, the early chapters. Yeah, I don't know yeah. when the last time you saw or read Dragon Ball was. It's been a while for Recently. me. Recently. Yeah. I mean, I've watched... I just, I just watched rewatched the entire series of Dragon Ball last year. The original Dragon Ball? Yeah. Yeah, see, so yeah, it's been years since I've seen it. So, like, some of the stuff was kind of coming to me as I read it. Like, oh, yeah, that was in the manga. Like, so wasn't Oolong the one, like, the Ox King, his, well, his place was on fire. Well, Oolong was, like, terrorizing a village. And it like, wasn't the Ox King village? No, it was okay. a different village. In the script, it's the Ox King's village. Okay. He doesn't have a mountain on fire, because that's what that's where they introduced the Kamehameha wave, sure. where Roshi blows up his house. Never really understood that in the manga, like, why that was supposed to be a good idea. But, um. He doesn't know his own strength. I guess. And then he but, gets so jacked. Yeah, like, which they they reference this in the, in the script. Like they're like, "Oh yeah, he's in full Kamehameha mode." But yeah, so in this it's in Oolong is torturing the Ox King village and he's kidnapping. Yeah, in the manga wasn't he kidnapping women and like basically forcing them to be his servant L- little or whatever? Girls. Yeah, little girls. <laughs> he's kid- like and not even like like I mean, forcing them. He was just like, "You're coming to live with me," and then he would just pamper them, and they were just like, "Yeah, oh, yeah and they loved we, it. We loved it." Yeah, yeah. Like, this this is he's straight up murdering and sucking the souls out of women, and he's like a smoke monster, and they end up defeating him with ant- night liquid nitrogen and a Kamehameha wave. That makes sense. Sure. I mean, it, I guess that's probably the most sense it would make. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, they it's just like to add an action scene, which they do a couple times. Like I said, so they go to the temple, like Bulma and Goku hook up. And they go to the temple to, like, find a master to find out where the Dragon Balls are. And, like, the temple's all been murdered by robots that they, like, fight. Or creatures. Androids. I don't even... Yeah. I mean, they reference... I'm pretty sure they reference a cyborg at some point. Um, and at one point, I thought they were going to do straight up the... Uh, what's it, The Karate Kid wax on, wax off moment. Oof. Because they show... So, like, when they hook up with Roshi... It's fucking described as Roshi, an old man with sunglasses and a Hawaiian shirt with a beard, and he's on an island hawking Turtle Island merchandise, or he's, like, trying to off... They literally come, and he's sitting there with a box of sunglasses and shirt and stuff of Turtle Island, and he's trying to sell it to him, which is ridiculous. Oh, and he immediately offers Bulma a bikini, so the character traits are there. Okay, yeah, I mean, in the movie as well, I mean, other than he was just, like... uh, Well, he touches her butt once, Yeah, and that's about it. I, uh... I also thought that they like the the racial diversity in the movie was very like just random. Yeah, because it was just like here's Goku's some a white kid, here's some white people, and here's some Asian people, and they're all mixed together. Yeah, and it just I don't know. It, it not like it, I mean, it didn't bother me at all, but it was just like pick pick a side. I mean, make them all white. You, or when make... you look at Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball, and, all, and when you look at the books and stuff, they're all kind of ambiguous. It's yeah. never, like, the architecture and a lot of stuff and, like, the <clears throat> the little villages is clearly Chinese or Japanese-inspired. But then sure. Dragon Ball Z is mostly, like, big futuristic cities and blah, blah, blah. So, like, in the movie, it never really bothered me. Like, oh, Bulma's, she seems like a white girl in the manga and everything. And honestly, Emmy Rossum as Bulma is maybe the only character I didn't hate in the movie. Yeah, I felt like she kind if of... If I had to say anything nice about the, that movie? The closest, like, as far as personality-wise... To what yeah. Bulma would have been. Well, in this, she straight up has a Matrix fight with Mai, where they are backflip kicking guns out of each other's hands and catching them in the air. And Bulma was never a fighter. No, she b- sucked. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't do anything. And throughout the whole script, she she has guns. She's like fighting people, but she never like fist fights anybody. And yeah. then all of a sudden, at the end, the end is also kind of set up similar to the movie where. Except we add Chow into the mix, where Yamcha's fighting Chow, Bulma's fighting Mai, Goku's fighting Piccolo, who they peel off straight up resurrects Piccolo with the Dragon Balls. Nobody dies that they need to bring Roshi back or whatever, which is honestly closer to the manga, because doesn't Roshi die the same way he does in the movie with the Mafuba? Because he misses or something? Does he? I don't even think he actually died, though. I thought he did. I know Krillin dies. Yeah. And then Goku goes to get the Dragon Balls to resurrect Krillin. Yeah. Which, when they introduce Krillin in the script, so they go to Turtle... So, first of all, I guess I should kind of back up. I'm all over the place with this one, but it's fucking weird. It's this movie. Yeah. Um, 
so they they hook up with Yamcha and they do it it's it's just like the the series like he shoots a bazooka at them and they have a fight and he uses the wolf fang fist multiple times in the script until Bulma gets a gun on him and then they're like hey we got to work together no and, like weird lovely dubby yeah no like, weird falling into a pit in the movie oh, yeah, and then all too. of a sudden they're like oh we have to go to this lava place because there's a dragon ball yeah or like it just so happened they fall into this pit and it yeah. just so happens that the dragon ball is right on the other side of that wall and yeah they're pit. like in a pit and like oh if we just go through this crack that's on the other side yeah like yeah. so convenient no i think in the script yamcha actually has one and Yamcha in the movie is so annoying. Like, yeah. Just like, yeah, bro, totally. <laughs> he's, a, he's a total bro, and that is kind of in the script as well. He's a little more... I think all the characters are better represented in the scripts. Like, they have... The dialogue is not terrible at all times. There's actually some decent dialogue. I actually laughed a couple times with Roshi. Like, they actually do some good perv Roshi jokes. Or, like... <laughs> Him tr- being, like, this all-knowing master, but then he's really just kind of a buffoon, where he, like... There's, like, a moment where he knows Bulma's name, and she's like, how'd you know my name? I didn't tell you. He's like, oh, all knowledge is in the ether for it to be pulled out of, and then they, like, the camera pans, and you see her the back of her jacket says Bulma. Oh. So, like, like stuff like that. They actually do some decent humor. I mean, it's, like, feels like 90s humor, but it works when you're reading it. Yeah. And it, it feels more true to what Dragon Ball than what is in the movie. Like, I'm trying to think of Roshi moments in the movie, which he's a great actor, but he was the wrong fucking casting for that it movie. Was, I mean, like, when they first introduced him, and he's like, I am the great Master Roshi. Yeah. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. And he's like, yeah, my grandpa's dead. And he just, like, stops mid-laugh, and then all of a sudden, dramatic camera turn, which yeah. is, like, one of the only scenes I remember for that movie. It's just fucking... How did they get this guy who's probably new Dragon Ball? I would assume he was probably a fan of it. Why, because he's Asian? No, like, I, I think he's <laughs> he, he was out there in interviews and stuff, like, talking about it. And, like, I just feel like as somebody who's, like, knew this material, how could you even play this? Like, how could you, the director tell you to do this and you just be like, okay, like, that makes sense. He's getting paid to do it. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, he can, maybe he's like Jackie Chan doesn't give a fuck about his American movies because I mean, I mean, this movie did big in Japan. It did it. Yeah, this movie was successful, not by much, but it made money. It was a cheap movie. They only made it for like forty million dollars. I think it made eighty or somewhere in that range, or it might even have made over a hundred. So, so, my next question: Was there ever talk of a sequel? There was. Oh, but God. <laughs> I believe it was very small talk. Once once the box office came back, it pretty much crushed it. I know the actor who played Piccolo was very adamant, like of not wanting to do it. No, of wanting to do it. Oh God! Like he he was the biggest supporter of this movie, from what I can tell. Yeah, because he was like the main character. Yeah, I mean like, he doesn't the, do anything. He was like the coolest one. Yeah, I mean he looks decent. Like so, I, I, there was a lot. I was follow, I don't know how closely you were following the movie up to release or anything. But I remember there were pictures that leaked out that showed Piccolo not green. Yeah. And I am of the theory that they digitally altered Piccolo to be green in the movie. Like they shot it differently? I think they shot it with the intention of him to not be green. That he was going to be this like skin-colored creature. And then they they saw the internet freaking out and they went and digitally colored him green. That's my theory. It looks like it, I would say. And then when you look at the movie, he is a shade of green that does not seem like makeup. Yeah. I could definitely see that. Yeah. Uh, th- that's my theory. I, I've never... I've, no one talks that, about this movie enough to really have any information out there about it. What do you think the chances are that we ever see a good live-action Dragon Ball movie in our lifetime? In our lifetimes? Or just probably after. slim to none. You don't think that there's any possible... I feel like now... I think because now with the would resurgence, be the good time. With now the resurgence of the movie, the, the animated movies that yeah. came out... And the uh, the new Dragon Ball Super series, like I don't I know like how well that stuff's the, doing in America, though. But I feel like now, like since it's well, even if they did it in Japan, and yeah, then it, it, like I know. would watch a Japanese version in subtitles. So I mean, lately there have been good anime or movies made based on anime. Like the, I'm a huge fan of Roroni Kenshin, and over the last few years they did three movies, live action movies that were all great. Like. They nailed it, and they made it look awesome. They cast it really well, 
and they did the story justice. And I look at those movies, I'm like, whoever was on that team, like that should be the prototype for making a movie like this. They did it right. They they paid tribute and they made it awesome. Mm-hmm. And they recently released those in America, and I'd highly recommend anybody watching them. But like honestly, even if they took this script and did a couple another pass on it, I feel like there could have been a good Dragon Ball movie here. Like it's it kind of crazy. Like, it. like I mean, so like I say, Krillin's in the movie. He's literally in it for one second. The writing in the script is fucking terrible. I will say that some of the story beats are good. The writing is awful. This dude, like the way we were talking about Yamcha being a bro, this guy kind of writes like a bro. Uh. And there's like so there's literally a scene where they they go to Turtle Island and they hook up with Roshi and they're walking into his house he's like oh you know come here we're gonna find the dragon ball or whatever and they walk by a guy like oh there's a dude bald dude on the couch like oh that's my other student it's like this is krillin him and goku give a thumbs up and goku smiles they're immediately best friends and i'm just that's terrible yeah and there's multiple moments of writing like that in the script i'm trying yeah there was a really bad one i don't know if i took a note on it um but yeah i mean it's just the the guy who wrote this and other and like other interesting things is like so when they go to Oolong's cave, it's like a dark cave. They 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 go into the cave and it's dark, and they like crack some light sticks or something, and they're like, "Oh, all of a sudden we see the remnants of a Starbucks and a Krispy Kreme," and I'm like, "Wait a minute, is this Product placement? <laughs> is this the fucking post apocalypse? Does Dragon Ball take place after the fucking world has ended, and this is just now what the world has become?" I it's. <laughs> like who knows i don't know what this guy was thinking but yeah so yeah they're literally in this cave and they're just like oh yeah the, the starbucks Krispy cream and they just walk by it it's like no big deal and the whole time all we're hearing about is the namics like they're constantly saying so basically the namics are made out to be bad guys they're and i was surprised when you said that the namics were name dropped in that classroom scene because is that the only time they ever bring yeah. it up it was literally just like He's like, uh, how do, he's like, Goku, pay attention. Like, this is when he's daydreaming about, daydreaming about Chi-Chi. And he's like, uh, how would our ancestors, you know, react to the this, this uh, eclipse that's coming up? And he's like, well, my grandfather always told me about this story about the, Nam- uh, the Namics that came t- to, the, you know, destroy the earth. And he, like, kind of trails off. And he's like, he's like, what are the Namics? Goes, yeah, and everybody's, oh, like, he's, making fun of them, right? He's like, they're oh, they're an evil alien race that tried to destroy the Earth 2000 years yeah. ago. And, and he's like, oh. He's like, well, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because in the movie, nobody... It's, like, in the script, it's implied everybody knows this story. And in the movie, he's made... He's kind of looked at, like, oh, that's what those old crazy kooks believe and blah, blah, blah. But, like, it's, it's treated as a joke. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, for the most part, it's treated like a joke in the script, too. But everybody knows the story. They're, they bring up the Namics like every five minutes and how they're this evil alien race that's coming to kill everybody. Which, I mean, I think we all know the Namics from Dragon Ball Z were not... Very gentle, docile Yeah, creatures. I mean, Piccolo was literally the only one. Which, I don't... Did they, did they ever explain why he's so evil? He's just evil, King right? King Piccolo? Yeah. I think he... Uh, he came to Earth like when he was young and yeah. he was just mistreated very badly by people that yeah. were there. Because I do remember in Dragon Ball Z after the Saiyan saga when they find his old ship. Yeah. And Kami's like, oh, this is who I was and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I think when he was a boy, like a little baby Namek, he was like treated really poorly. Or I think he might have just been evil in general. Yeah, because honestly, I, I've never seen the end of Dragon Ball. Like the, not dude, all of it. The whole, the whole King Piccolo saga... And then when he gets killed, and then like the pickle that we know in yeah, Dragon Ball Z is, is born, born, and he's fighting Goku in the uh, World Martial Arts Tournament, that's probably one of the best fight scenes in all of anime. I would say, really, it's so like good. the in the World Tournament stuff. Yeah. See, I my favorite part of Dragon Ball was the World Tournaments, like the first mm-hmm. World Tournament saga. Yeah. And they actually have the World Tournament to a degree in the movie. Like Chi Chi is fighting at yeah. the tournament. Yeah. It's. It's not weird. Like yeah. it's like a circular room with like a gym mat in the middle. Yeah, and they they have this really fucking awkward fight at the end where he just like blocks her foot. That's so bad. I don't even know oh. if you're awake by that Dude, point. Some of the fight scenes in this movie were so bad. 
bad. Like just all like the choreography the scenes in this movie. I mean, yeah, I don't. I can't even. I can't even say with a straight face that there was anything good about it. It just seemed very lazy and, and it, just like it was like they were throwing slow punches and then they would yeah. just speed it up in the camera. Like yeah, and then there's the scene with him and Roshi where he's like throwing like a hurricane of punches and the camera's like matrix spinning around them as he's like blurred hands and Roshi's yeah. blocking them all. It's the so the fight dead. scenes in the script are described as like so epic. First of all, Goku's never in any danger until the very end. He is destroying everybody. He's beating the shit out of everybody. But they literally describe him as like just fucking kicking ass. And like him and Yamcha have multiple fights. So in the script, Mai, instead of becoming Chi Chi, because Chi Chi comes in so late, she becomes like a little girl, which raises whole lots of questions about her shape shifting abilities because she literally changes to a tiny little child. But um, so she like ambushes a caravan that has like a dragon ball mm-hmm. and she kills them all and then poses as this little girl. And then she's like, oh, I think they were looking for this. And she hands them the dragon. Ball. And then this little girl just tags along with them. And like they imply that Goku knows something is up with her, but he just kind of like, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, you can come with us. And then that then they go hook up with Roshi. So she's like with them for a long time and just kind of was like posing with them and. There's never, like, that betrayal moment that you expect. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, later, she basically convinces them to all fight each other. She's just like, aha! No, not even. She, (laughs) so she, so there's this, there, after they, like, fight Oolong and have the oxygen, so Roshi gets injured during the Oolong fight. Like, he bulks up and does a Kamehameha, and it's implied that he basically spent all of his energy, so he's got to, like, kind of hang back while they continue the quest. And then they get, like, ten feet away from Ox King's village, and everything goes to hell. <laughs> like, they're on a campsite, and the little... She, as the little girl, so, like, Bulma, they're having some kind of... art. It's This is getting so boring by this point. But they're, like, arguing about something, and they decide to kind of camp. Like, Goku's getting a little, like, I need to finish this quest, and blah, blah. Oh, Bulma finds out that the Dragon Balls are going to be scattered. So she's all angry because she wanted them for the same reason she wants them in the movie, which is for power, the money and blah, blah, blah. And Yamcha's tagging along because he wants money from her. Mm-hmm. And, um, d- throughout the script, Yamcha's like not interested in Bulma. He's like, Hey man, I don't care. Like he's like Goku fucking have at it. And Goku's interested in Bulma, but Bulma's interested in Yamcha and Yamcha just doesn't give a fuck. He just wants money. And then there's the switch point where they meet Chi Chi and Goku and Chi Chi immediately fall in love, which is not how it happened. She he's basically tricked into marrying her. I love that like Goku like at no point in like in the manga or in the um in the in the anime yeah. I guess it's the same. At no point is he like like show any kind of affection towards Chi Chi. Never like he like. To the point where I just was like, yeah, Goku's gay. Like, <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't think... Go- I mean, Goku's an idiot. That's always been the thing. Goku, a, he's a master fighter, but he's always been stupid. Yeah. And, like, I think Dragon Ball Z Abridged, the series on YouTube, mm-hmm. handles it perfectly. Because it almost seems like he doesn't know what marriage is, and he's just like, all right, I guess this is happening. But in, in this, he like him and Gigi immediately fall for each other. She has, like, 12 lines of dialogue in this whole movie, and it's all... Very stereotypical. Oh, you can do it. You just have to find yourself and blah blah blah. What was the line that she kept saying? You have to make your energy. Your energy has to flow as your own, or something like that. Like, so okay, isn't it too- fucking weird in the movie that she's like an expert on mastering your key more than he is? Yeah, like it's fucking Goku, and, he, and she in the. Like she was a fighter in Dragon. Yeah, like she, I mean they were kind of like building it up in the movie as like. He's like finding his way. Like he's, yeah. he's like just like I mean he's in high school. He's a, yeah. he's a kid. And I, I definitely that's that is a theme in the script, but I think it's handled a lot better in the script because there's a lot of talk of like finding your destiny and blah blah blah. But it doesn't make sense because Roshi knows that the little girl is bad and he's like doesn't say anything because he needs Goku to figure it out. He needs to find his way. So he literally puts them all in danger. Yeah, literally almost costing them their lives. Yeah, so like so I like you said, he's out of commission, and then when he comes back at the end, he's like, Oh, you know, I was I wasn't as bad off as I led you to believe. I just needed Goku to figure out some things. And it's like, you fucking old shit. Like God. what are you doing? And just, just like Yeah, so okay, so they go to the camps, they're like camping, because Goku, he's like, We need to go and blah blah and like, Well, we need to rest. So Um the little girl kind of runs after them and she because they, like, leave the little girl at the Ox King village, and sure. then she, like, follows them because she's got to fuck shit up. 
And she <laughs> like changes her voice to all the different characters' voices and whispers into all their ears as they're sleeping as the other characters. Like in Goku's ear, she whispers as Bulma and Yamcha plotting against him, and then as Bulma, Yamcha and Goku plotting against her, and so on and so forth. That seems way too complicated. Yeah, so they all wake <laughs> up and just start fighting each other. And so Yamcha and Goku start fighting, and then the little girl's like, quick, grab the Dragon Balls, we have to get out of here. And then she like, they run away, and then now the aha moment, and she beats up Bulma, and then takes the Dragon Balls and leaves. The, like, for her, like, that seems like the most, like, long, drawn out, and complicated plan you could possibly have. She's around for so long, like, so much so that I forget the characters there. And, like, she comes in so early... I mean, maybe like halfway through, and she just fucking hangs out with them. Where in the movie, it's like a 10 second scene where she poses as Chi Chi. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, no, now where we got Chi Chi versus Chi Chi fighting, which is probably the best fight in the movie, honestly. Yeah. It's the only one that feels like a real fight. Although I do like Goku flipping around at the end. <laughs> um, but I mean, the yeah. fight with Piccolo is so bad. It's so <laughs> short. And they're just like, pew, pew, like, yeah, they're literally just like throwing, uh, like, one thing that's never established in the movie really is energy waves anyway, and now all of a sudden they're launching them all over the place. <laughs> they're just going crazy <laughs> like with it. He's flipping around, like throwing them with each hand. Also, can I say how fucking stupid when Goku gets like killed with this gunshot? Yeah. And then Roshi brings him back to life by Kamehameha him in the chest. Yeah. They don't establish that, like, oh, it's implied that this energy can be used as energy like fucking anything it's like we've only known it as a destructive force yeah and like yeah he literally he even says he calls it a kamehameha wave right Mm -hmm. and like yeah it's like they imply that all energy is a kamehameha wave he's well he first off they like it they they called it airbending yeah they were like it's airbending oh the the kamehameha wave is like i think i'm watching the wrong anime yeah and then I just like one thing that always that bothered me was every time like Roshi was talking to like the other master and they'd leave he'd be like Namaste yeah. like what the fuck like, what this religion is, like that's like a pick- yoga that's like a yoga term yeah I'll, uh, Hindu is Hindu Hinduism or like some yeah. sort of like in, it really feels like they tried to make everything mystical and like and, yeah and but it's kind of ambiguous and cliche like, and it's like everything is everything like it all makes sense just throw it all together it's like one religion to rule them all like God. it makes no fucking sense and they're just throwing out terms that you know a fucking average viewer would know mm-hmm. is not right and i can't believe this movie made like 100 million dollars um i mean if the, if the script came out the way it was written i i would believe it doing even better in japan we might have seen a sequel and honestly if they came out or like we're gonna do it i'd watch it yeah i would just to see the fucking train wreck yeah i mean i think you could improve on that movie even it wouldn't it wouldn't be amazing i mean have you seen have you seen these like fan-made trailers on youtube i mean they are incredible i mean the acting is usually pretty bad but that's what you get for fan-made stuff but like but but the like they're doing what you're seeing the visualness i mean even like the the cgi or whatever is like is kind of rough but like yeah it's still like for something that you somebody made in their basement probably like it's incredible why could not this 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 studio made movie like look like this why couldn't (laughs) they like why couldn't it just be fucking good god damn it i'm insane so mad my my immediate answer is because it's Fox. Because Fox is fucking so notorious for f- their executives screwing with movies. But, like... I mean, this is the script that was turned in. And this mm-hmm. script reads like Dragon Ball. It reads like fucking garbage. Like, this still would have been a bad movie. Sure. But it would have been recognizable as Dragon Ball. Yeah. Like, as much as everybody complains about the high school stuff, that stuff is still in here. But it's... It's it's shorter. Like mm-hmm. the high school stuff in this script is like three pages versus like the ten pages it is in the movie. Because mm. I mean, there's the classroom scene. There's the scene with him and Chi Chi in the hallway. There's the party scene. It, it also, I mean, it also kind of bugged me that his hair was just like normal hair. Like I kind of, I mean, it was to... kind of spiky. Yeah. And by the end, it's like it's changed a little. I will say, okay, I'm gonna say a couple good things about the movie. These are the only good things you'll ever hear me say about the movie. I like the soundtrack. I think the score is decent for like a martial arts mm. fantasy epic. It's Brian Tyler. He's a he does like the Fast and Furious movies. He does he did the pirate or the um, soundtrack for Assassin's Creed Four, which is all piratey, and it's great. He's a great composer. I think the soundtrack is fine. It 
it has like the mystical kung fu sure. taiko drums as well as some of your new agey shit that you kind of recognize from the Bruce Faulkner soundtracks, which I fucking love from Dragon Ball Z. And I like the the costume at the end. His like his yeah. gi, his gi. Yeah, I think it's fine. It looked I, good. Yeah, it. I was. I mean, I remember. I remember when it when I saw it for the first time, like when I watched it. When I first saw the picture of him and the gi, I was like, maybe this will be okay. Yeah, I, it was like the it was like the one little glimmer of hope that this was yeah. a big decent movie. And, the, and he looks decent in it. Like when you see him in that outfit, and you see that they cast him and Justin Chatwin, I I like him as an actor. I think he's I, he's a great and shameless. Mm-hmm. He's a piece of shit character, but yes. he's a good actor. And I see he was in like War of the Worlds. I've seen him in stuff, and he's fine. Um. That was, yeah, like you said, it was the one glimmer of hope when you look at that picture. And, like, he fills out the costume. And, like, it looks fine. Yeah. Even, like, I mean, Bulma's, Bulma's costume looked fine. Like, she had, like, the, the hair. Even though her hair wasn't completely blue, she yeah, had Yeah, I like the blue streak thing. That was which fine. Which is, a, it's, like, a nice little nod to, yeah. like, the, to the, how the character looks yeah. in the anime. Um, and the guy who played Yamcha June Pak or June Park, I think his name is. He looked like a piece of shit, so he looked just <laughs> yeah. like Yamcha. So. Yeah, I mean... He had bl- he had like blonde streaks. Didn't yeah, he? it he's was like, like he's like a hair. singer. He's like a J-pop singer or something. Really? Yeah, he's like he's he's like a pretty boy in Japan or whatever. Um, I part of me, I mean, Piccolo looked cool. He just he didn't was, look like Piccolo, and no. it kind of bothered me. Like I wish he had the antennas. I mean, they're kind of there. If you notice, they're like kind of embedded onto his head, but the, it's not. What There's you also want. the scene where he's like in this like chair that like is pointing like pushing needles into his arm so he's like drawing his blood they use the blood to create the monsters which is kind of reminiscent to the yeah so he does that in the cartoon right yeah in the book in a way i there's nothing like that in the script so pilaf is kind of your piccolo stand-in in the script like we see him in the beginning so they're on like a it's like an aircraft carrier that's like out of commission basically Mm -hmm. and so like he has these like robots there and it's him mai and chow and then, like, we don't see him again until the end. Like, there's no villain throughout the script. Whereas in the movie, you got Mai kind of coming in and out. Mm-hmm. And you got you see scenes with Piccolo a couple times. Like, there's the scene where it implies he blows up a village and then comes and gets the Dragon Ball. There's the scene where he, like, finds the one underwater in a field. There's that weird he, like, scene. Fucking... And then he, like, he, like, he looks evaporates a pond. And he goes... And... Much easier to find with no water. Yeah, like, like what the hell? Like, oh, it's so fucking jokes. bad. I feel so bad for that guy because when you read the interviews and stuff, he was super into it. I think James Marston, I think his name is, or something. Is he like a that. black guy? No, he's a white dude. I think, oh. like, I think he might also be a singer. He looked like I just assume because I feel like Piccolo is just the token black guy on Dragon Ball Z. He does kind of <laughs> give off that character vibe, doesn't he? I, I mean, he's a green alien, but he does feel like the is that, black. Is character. that like? Is that like? Like putting that kind of stereotype in just because he's a de- he's not white so he's got to be like the black person no i mean like mr. i mean mr. subconsciously well oh, dude mr popo is straight black <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can't get blacker than popo <laughs> <laughs> but i mean um, like i mean this is kind of off topic but i think you think subconsciously like we just kind of automatically like associate him with being i mean he literally was a different species like, yeah i don't know that's weird. I don't. I've but like, you, if you, yeah, that. if you were to tell me that like so they cast a black guy as Piccolo, I'd be like, yeah, that fits, and I don't know why. Yeah, I think I mean, Piccolo's is like the best fucking character in Dragon Ball. His Z, voice so. too. Yeah, is, is kind of bl- not black. His voice is black. That doesn't make sense. But like, he's got. It, it doesn't make sense, but it does. Yeah, I'm not racist. Know. Yeah, I mean, if, if yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're we're trying not to be. Um, yeah, I mean, so Piccolo, Piccolo only comes in in the last like five fucking pages and the fights is very similar to how it is in the movie do they at least, in the script do they at least explain how he gets fucking resurrected like from yeah. the dragon balls yeah he gets brought back from the dragon balls okay so the whole time they're saying that the story is piccolo will come back with Azaru and blah 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 kind of like they do in the movie mm-hmm. but the whole thing is yeah pilaf and mai were namix in disguise and they were searching for the dragon ball so they could bring back their destroyer sure and i don't even remember how pilaf dies honestly like i remember how chow dies so like piccolo comes back and Goku is shirtless. He doesn't have a costume. He just has pants because his clothes get ripped off. So he becomes Ozaru. And he is like, he attacks Bulma and Yamcha, kind of how it is in the movie. And then Roshi hits him with his fucking memory beam. And he re- finds out that he didn't kill Grandpa Gohan. And he turns back into a human. And Roshi gives him some pants. 
Um, yes. And that's then they go straight into the last fight. Yamcha squares off with Chow, Bulma. Do you know what Gun Kata is? Have you seen the movie Equilibrium? No. Okay. Gun Kata is martial arts with guns. So it's like, just fucking look up some scenes for Equilibrium. Basically, imagine standing in one spot and having like 20 people surrounding you and being able to just fucking kung fu move and shoot in all directions and like kill them all. But it's basically like martial arts with gunfighting. And they straight up describe Mai and Bulma. He uses the term gun kata and says it's the most badass thing you've ever seen. It's like a fucking yes. direct line out of the script. Yes. And that's how he Bulma... Really wa- he really wanted it to happen. And it did he not happen. He literally like, describes every action scene as like, it's so fucking cool, dude. Like You can't even believe you're seeing... Th- I imagine a lot of coke is being sniffed as he was like writing this script. Um, yeah, they literally... Yeah, it's like Gun Kata. She backflip, kicks the gun out of her hand and catches it in midair and shoots Mai and she <laughs> falls into lava. And it's fucking ridiculous. And then Piccolo is shooting energy waves at them and Yamcha, Wolf Fang, Fist, Chow, and then gives him a swift roundhouse kick that throws him across the room into Piccolo's blast and disintegrates him. Nice. So then it comes down to Goku and Piccolo, who... They do a callback to the beginning. So remember the beginning of the movie, Goku's bouncing on the wires yes. and him and Gohan fight? That is in the script. He flicks the fucking bug. Yeah, he flicks the, the bug. The bug is not in the script. But uh bug should have I think I think instead time. of I think it's instead of wires, it's like poles. Like they're kind of like karate kid bouncing on poles, but they're like hopping around sure. and shit. Um and so the ground and so they keep so oh my god, I can't even believe I forgot about this. In the beginning of the script, his buddies are playing the Dragon Ball video game. And they're like, oh, when you step on this thing, you fall down this trap. But remember to, like, hold the button for 15 seconds and press jump. And then you, like, avoid the spikes trap at the bottom. They come to a temple in real life that looks just like the one from the video game. And Goku counts to 15 as he falls down the trap and is able to avoid the fucking spike trap. out of here. Swear to fucking God. Get what? And he ends up in this pit, and that's where Pilaf and Mai, they're like up top, and they're like top of the pit opens, and they tell him that he's a Saiyan and Ozaru, and then he becomes Ozaru. I would have for sure turned off the movie if that, <laughs> if that happened in the movie. That's Just... not the only callback. So they call back to while they're fighting in this temple, the ground starts to break, and the ground they're standing on becomes like pillars, and now all of a sudden Goku is standing on pillars like he was with Gohan in the beginning. And Piccolo's flying and shooting energy waves and stuff. So there's no scene where Roshi is, like, teaching Goku about the Kamehameha wave. They never even, like, reference Goku learning it. But there's one thing. him and So they're, they eventually come to a pirate town that's basically like Tortuga from Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it's described exactly the same. They're like, oh, they come to a pirate town, in quotations, and, like... There's people shooting guns all over. People are being dragged out of bars. There's wild dogs running around. It, literally, I just pictured Tortuga from Pirates of the Caribbean as I was reading it. That, make, that sounds amazing. Yeah. And so, like, the, then they they steal a boat and they go pick up Roshi. So then they take this boat. And while they're on it, there's, like, a hint of training between Yo, uh, Roshi. I keep wanting to say Yoshi. Between <laughs> Roshi and <laughs> Goku. That was a good impression. Um, And they're, like... Basically holding a ball. This is what I meant about the, from the wax on, wax off moment from yes, Karate Kid. Yeah, <laughs> like holding a ball and like tossing it back and forth, kind of like with the hand motion, like you would picture from the anime of them when they fire the Kamehameha wave, they put their hands up and they're like tossing a ball and catching it back and forth. And I'm like, oh, this is how they're gonna bring up the Kamehameha wave later. Is it's gonna be like, remember when we were throwing the ball? Focus your energy. But no, Piccolo fires like an energy blast at Goku. Okay. So- so in the beginning, Gohan is talking to Goku about God, this is fucking terrible. About <laughs> basically being able to understand time, and like, it's like why he'll never be able to focus because he can't focus on time or something. It fucking makes no sense. So of course, in this moment where all hell is breaking loose around them, Goku figures it out. It's like, oh, past, present, and future. It's all the same thing. It all matters. Makes zero sense. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, remember, I remember. Yeah, remember that thing at the beginning. It saves us. So Piccolo launches an energy ball at Goku, who catches it, and then it turns into a Kamehameha wave as he shoots it back and like disintegrates Piccolo. I mean, uh, I mean, that's not how it works. No, it's not how it works at all. But I guess in, in the 
But I was like, what was the point of that ball scene? Because literally, I was like, this is how it's going to happen. He's like, yo, when we're done with this, we're going to start this sweet-ass basketball team. I'm pretty sure they call it, like, a Kame ball. Like, it's like a, it's like, think of what are those fucking in in the gym? Like medicine a medicine ball. ball. Yeah. Uh, basically picture like a medicine ball, but they're like tossing it back and forth like a Kamehameha wave and they call it like a Kame ball. And I'm like, okay, so the, yeah, this is how he learns it. And nope, it just never comes up again. Maybe it's just implied. Yeah, I guess. But I, <laughs> I mean, it's, like if you, if you pick that out, like obviously like, I mean, I picked it out cause I was reading it cause they give you the text that it's called a Kame ball. There's no dialogue that calls it that. So, oh. like, somebody watching the movie, if nobody says it, unless it was printed on the fucking side of the ball. Which is possible. Yeah, I guess. Like, fucking big beach ball just says Kame on it. Like, why did his house always say Kame house? I never understood that. I don't know. Because that always confused me. I mean, I guess it's because of Kamehameha. But yeah. I came to Dragon Ball after Dragon Ball Z. So, like, I already knew the character of Kami. So, I was like, why does Roshi live in Kami house? Yeah, that's I, I thought that, too. I've never known. I think just Kamehameha. Yeah, and I, that's where I put it together. Like, once I started watching Dragon Ball, I was like, oh, all right. Um, and actually, it might, I think it might mean turtle in Japanese. Kame? Yeah. It, it, it might, I think it has, it might have something to do with turtle. Because it is Turtle Island and the, he's the turtle hermit and blah, blah, blah. What's that? Siri. Yeah. Doesn't say anything. You're <laughs> it just says here, check it out and give you a blank screen. Yeah, pretty much. That's ridiculous. That's what it was. I mean, while you're looking that up, um, as far as like the just the kind of basic structure of the script, there's a lot of weird. It is turtle. Kame means turtle in Japanese. All right, I knew that somewhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, even the basic structure of the script, there's a lot of so like the scene I told you where the little girl they pick her up. There's no moment of come with us. It's just like they find this little girl and she's like. I think they were looking for the Dragon Ball. And then it's just hard cut to them on the road and the girls just with them. There's no <laughs> dialogue about what happened. This child. Who killed your family? Are we going to run into these people in 10 feet? Like, nothing. It's just they find this little girl and all of a sudden she's coming with them. It, it's it, This is a movie that just should not have been made. No. and Because like, I remember, and including myself, it pissed a lot of people off. I was furious. I, I it, There are two movies that have offended me to the point where I wanted to turn them off. One is Dragon Ball Evolution. The other was Resident Evil Retribution. Uh, I thought you were going to say Batman v Superman. No, because I watched that multiple times. It was a bad movie, but it didn't... I mean, I was offended, for sure. But <laughs> it didn't make me want to turn it off. Because there are good things about that movie. There's not many good things about Dragon Ball Evolution. No, it's just... like. I enjoy watching bad movies. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you've been telling me to watch Hell Comes to Frog Town or whatever Dude, for a while. Amazing, but this movie is just so hard to get through. Like I was <laughs> sitting there, just like, fuck. Like, like I was, I was, I was eating on my break, and I looked over, and you just gave me the finger, like as you were watching it. <laughs> like, I mean, it's fucking terrible. And the script would have been a better movie. In all honesty, I can say. You should fucking read this thing. Like, I know we've it already talked about it. You should read it. Like, you're still going to be like, oh, and you're still going to get so mad at some things. <laughs> but, like, there are good things about it. Like, you can see that this guy actually put in some effort. Even if, uh, he's out there saying he apologizes and that, like, it was a money job and he should have cared more about it. He He's right, but you can tell he put forth some effort. And there's... He included the major things you would want to be included. If this movie, if this movie fucking had Krillin in it, even though Krillin doesn't even come with him on the journey, they literally is like, "Oh, that's my student." He gives him a thumbs up. You never see Krillin again, ever. Never, <laughs> not, no name drop, nothing. It, it still would have been better. Like they, they use, they call him a Saiyan. They, well, they, they never even, car- they never even reference him being a Saiyan in Dragon Ball at all. No, which, I mean, that was a Dragon Ball Z thing when Raditz came up. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you want to plant the seeds for a sequel, so that's the type of thing I'll, I'll yeah, allow. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, and there's... <laughs> so I guess I didn't talk about the uh, the cloud. What's it? The Nimbus oh, cloud? Nimbus. So they defeat Piccolo. They're in, they're in the temple. It's falling apart. How are they going to get out? Oh, God. I can't even remember how it comes up. Bulma says, oh, if only we had your Nimbus cloud. And Roshi's like, hey, that's a good idea. And then the fucking top of the temple just 
gets destroyed, somehow doesn't crush them, and the Nimbus cloud comes flying in. But only someone of pure heart can ride the Nimbus, just like in the book and in this thing. Mm-hmm. So, and Roshi straight up says, I damn well can't do it. So Goku hops on it, they all grab onto Goku, and they fly out of the temple to safety. <laughs> and that's kind of how it ends. So there's a little bit more. So he drops them off, and he just immediately takes off and leaves them there. And he, or actually, no, they decide that they're going to find the Dragon Balls again, kind of like they do in the thing. There's no, like, Roshi's just like, oh, they're not gone. They're just spread around the world. Like, and there's no thing about, like, oh, they turned to stones for a year, blah, blah, blah. They're just, well, they're just scattered. Yeah. So Goku, he's like, oh, well, I'll help you find them. And they're like, oh, I don't know if we want to go looking for them or whatever. But Goku's like, well, I'm going to go find them. But he's like, but first, and he just leaves flies back over to the Ox King's place to pick up Chi-Chi and they go ride around on the cloud until it flies into the screen and we get a fucking the end. God. And like, they don't even, I mean, they, they plant some seeds for a sequel, but they don't even like give you the hard fucking sequel cell. The end? Yeah. Question mark? Yeah. Like even that would have been a little more than what they do. And by planting seeds for a sequel, I only mean that they name drop shit that we as fans would know. Like, if you were thinking if you're an average moviegoer, like we would know that calling him a Saiyan is setting up for the Saiyan saga in Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. The average fucking person wouldn't know that. The say what? Yeah. <laughs> and it's again, things like that offend me. Like in Resident Evil Retribution, me and Vinny talked about this on that podcast. They fucking straight up name drop the Las Plagas parasite from the video game, even though they never have fucking touched on it or mentioned it at all in any other movie. Oh, that movie makes me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, I don't know. This would this would have been better. Like, I think you should read this. I think anybody who saw that movie and was mad about it should read it. It's yeah. It's I mean, I still have it in my email, so maybe whenever I have a chance to uh, yeah, I mean, just skim through it at least. I definitely it, would love to check it out. It gets kind of boring, like as the movie does. I mean, I think reading in general is boring. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this one was hard to get through. I I like the first script I ever read was the alien engineer script that became Prometheus, which mm-hmm. is one we'll be doing on the show and I can't wait for. But I, I blasted through that thing. Excuse me. Um, this one took me like a week to get through. It's, it was making me angry. Like <laughs> I have to be honest. I'm sitting there reading it and I'm just, I'm getting so pissed because for one, it would have been slightly better. It would have turned a one star movie into a two star movie. Let's be honest. <laughs> but, uh, it would have been a two-star movie that I think we as fans could have enjoyed. Maybe. Yeah. I definitely, I mean, judging by what you say, I mean, just the inclusion of certain characters could have made it all the difference. And honestly, the dialogue is better. That was, that was, that's one major takeaway from the script. The dialogue is, there's a lot of it. There's more of it. Um, and just, I feel like the characters are written a little more properly. Uh, Goku, like Yamcha is still kind of the weakest written character. But he's still better than what we get in the movie. I yeah. mean, there's definitely a lot of, like, he doesn't care. Because I'm trying to... Th- I feel like he's, like, not even, like... He's, like, there, but he's not, like... There's no, like, nothing about him that what, makes does us he care do about Does he do anything in the movie? Does he have any fight scenes or anything? Uh, I mean, yeah, when they, they get ambushed by those, like, blood creatures. He actually fights them? Yeah, and then, like, at the end, I think he fights a little bit. But then, like, it's just, like... He traps them and they, like they all hate him and they're like, "We need your help." And then like yeah. they help him and then like Roshi cut, can jump really high. Yeah, cutscene to like wherever they are and the like they're at place. They're like, at some. Where did that place come from? But then like they're out. They're in like him and Bulma are just at some bar and then she's yeah. just, like, couldn't. Oh, they kind of like each other now. Can't believe I'd enjoy talking to a thief so much. Or yeah, something, like, something stupid. There's like, definitely a lot more of Yamcha being a thief in the script. Like when they go to the pirate town and they're like, "Oh, we need to pool our money to get a boat." He like everyone gives him money and he puts it in an envelope. Then he gives them the guys he's buying the boat from like a, an empty envelope. So then like later when they're leaving with the boat, everyone's coming and shooting at them. Like they they do a lot more action in the script and most of it's pretty bad. And it's just, just like oh Goku's a badass, but I mean like Yamcha has multiple fights with Goku. He fights another character on his own at the end. They give him something to do. I feel like when they took out all those characters in the script, like the bad guys you kind of take out everything for Yamcha to do. He's just tagging along. It's implied in the script that he can't even really, or in the movie, that he can't even really fight. (laughs) And I I mean, they use mostly guns in the script. There's a lot of gunfights in the script. Yeah, in the movie as well. Yeah. 
Which for a martial arts movie, it's like, why are there so many gunfights? But hey, the Matrix did it, so I guess it's fine. That's true. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess that's all I got to say about it. It's it's still bad, but it's it's bad in a way that I think a fan could have found some good in. Yeah, and I mean, like, I guess the only redeeming thing about this movie is that it's so bad that it makes <laughs> me appreciate the what we have the anime yeah. and stuff so much more because it's yeah. like this is like like it's something that like I grew up with that you grew up with that we love and you know I'm constantly trying to get people like people that like don't watch it like my girlfriend she loves watching anime she never watched Dragon Ball Z we started really? watching it she wanted to watch it so I was like of course I could never yes. get my wife to watch anime <laughs> she she was like yeah like so we we started watching through Dragon Ball which I was like I was like Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z are like night and day it's like two different yeah, two it's different very rate. different um, but she like she it's it's exciting for me to like to pass on that in onto somebody else that yeah. hasn't seen it before. So it, the only redeeming factor I could say is that this movie was so bad that it makes me appreciate. <laughs> you should make her watch the movie. God, I could not do that to her. <laughs> what if she loves it? I'd have to kill her. <laughs> that's that's always my favorite thing. Is like there's something that like we as fans know. Like Berto was telling me about. He was talking to this girl about uh movies. And they're like, oh, did you see this movie? And Burrow's like, yeah, I loved it. She's like, oh, did you see Guardians of the Galaxy? He's like, yeah, I loved it. She's like, did you see Suicide Squad? He's like, that was the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. And she was like, oh, that's like my favorite movie of the yeah, year so I'm far. I'm sure she loved fucking Harley Quinn, too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. There's so many fucking Harley Quinns this <laughs> Halloween. Um, yeah, I mean, I find it interesting that Pilaf was there. I love Pilaf as a character. But he's mm-hmm. so not the fucking Pilaf we know. He's yeah. very dark and brooding. He's basically Piccolo, so... <laughs> mini piccolo yeah but pilaf is a character i always enjoy when he pops up in like the current shit he's yeah he's a good and little Chow. good little comedic relief chow is like one of my favorite characters from dragon ball i just, love that like now like, especially in super like how they're kids they're just like they just completely flip from being heels to baby faces yeah like god you're such a wrestler <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's like they don't they just show up in super and they're young and it's never they just kind of throw have a throwaway line to explain why they're young where they like it, it's implied that they got the dragon balls before and accidentally wish to be young well it's from i mean I, you remember in gt when they, they but gt is not related to super you gotta you it's gotta not take it's not away. but i think they just like they just flipped it they were just like and yeah that's kind of what happened but here but the implication is there's they had the dragon balls at one point and somehow they fucked it up to the point where they i mean just that's their whole kids. that's like their whole thing though is yeah they were just bumbling idiots yeah and then in the frieza one they actually get money which was hilarious yeah he's like uh, he asked for like a million zenny or something and it was like not that much yeah it's just, it's just like a little stack of money she's like why didn't you ask for a hundred million and he's just like uh because too much would be too much to manage or something like yeah. that like, i love those fucking characters chow is one of my favorite characters just a dog in a fucking ninja costume yeah <laughs> it's also interesting how like my went from being like in dragon ball like just kind of like a henchman character yeah. dragon ball z being or not even an existing character. Yeah, they don't. I don't think it references any and of then those characters in Dragon Ball Z. In Super, she's like a very big yeah. part of like the the resistance. With, yeah, she's with become Trunks. like a big deal, and her and Trunks are implied to have like a relationship. Yeah, which is was just kind of cool because I I think that's, yeah. it's interesting how they. Uh, it always bummed me out that in the movie that. and in the script they they inc- I don't like that they included Mai in the movie because I they just made her a bad guy and they took away anything that made her interesting. Like mm-hmm. I loved the bumblingness of those three characters. Yeah, and that's completely gone in all of this. Can't have an action movie with too many bumbling people though. Yeah, I guess just the main characters because fucking Goku and Roshi are the two goofiest people I've ever seen in a movie. I do like to see where my punches him in the face, and it's implied that he's just like so strong, and his like cheek is just moved aside. And oh he doesn't yeah, even move. No, like you know what's funny? The the I can actually pinpoint the scene where I'm immediately taken out of this movie. The beginning when they do the opening on his face, like when he wait what the oh, very beginning of his the movie. eyes and yeah. shit. And it's like no, sweat that was, I mean that was kind of lame. But when he gets knocked off of the the high wires. And lands headfirst in the fucking melons. Oh, yeah. And it just goes... Yeah. Like, he lands in it and it makes that <laughs> sound. I'm like, I'm done. Honestly, the the really bad wire work when Gohan jumps onto the wires. Is, oh, God. I'm immediately... I'm like, ugh. This is literally the first five seconds of the movie. Come on, you, yeah, you couldn't spring for some better, like, 
Like and even like when when Bulma's riding her fucking motorcycle thing, like the the fucking oh, the terrible green screen. Oh my god! They like, shot the movie in just like a jeans factory in Mexico City or something. The whole movie. <laughs> of course, it was made in Mexico. Well, Mexico, yeah, Mexico is that in Mexico? Is that in Mexico? Mexico City yeah, is yeah, the yeah. capital. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they yeah they shot it all there in like a jeans factory, and just, so you, clearly everything is a set. They never went to a high school, I guess. I mean, maybe that was the one location shoot because the outside scene had to have been. Yeah, it had to have been. And the mansion scene. The, I guess Gohan's house could have been a set, but I don't. I wouldn't like to believe that. Inside, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, the, most of the movie was shot there. That's hilarious. Yeah, and it shows. It fucking perfectly sums yeah. up this movie. And the guy who fucking made it has made good movie. I want to say the guy who fucking directed this movie made Kung Fu Hustle. I need to. I love Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah. I need to double check this. Where the fuck? This is, sorry, Googling on a podcast is always the greatest thing ever. Yeah, I mean... But, Kung- like, there was... Uh, I'm going to probably eat my words as soon as I... I do like that when you search Dragon Ball Evolution, Dragon Ball Evolution 2 is still something that pops up. Oof. Wait, this is an hour and 40 minutes. But the thing we read said 88 minutes. Hmm. So maybe this movie is longer. I don't know. It felt... Directed by James Wong. That sounds very familiar. Okay, he directed and wrote episodes of The X-Files. He directed Final Destination and Final Destination 3. He directed The One, the Jet Li movie. That's a good movie. Yeah, I like that movie. All right, yeah, okay, sorry. Maybe it was the producer. I think that's who it was. Stephen Chow. Yeah, I think he did Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah, so it was the producer. I'm sorry, he directed Kung Fu Hustle. But yeah, I mean, that... He he's already made a good movie. I don't understand how he fucking produced this thing. I mean, Final Destination isn't great directing credits, but I'll take what I can get. Yeah, I mean those movies did well. They yeah, did I mean, I, I think the first how many was fine. five, five, I think. Yeah, I heard the fifth one was actually really good too. I heard that. I heard. I mean, the first one was really good. I like the first one. Second one was decent. Yeah, it was okay. Third and fourth were not good. I didn't see any of the other ones. I I didn't see the third or fourth, but I heard they were bad. I was I, not I, all I heard about the fifth one that it was good. Yeah, and the fifth one they tie it in because at the end they get on a plane that is the plane from the first one, and so the characters from five die, and it kind of is like, oh, we're resetting the cycle because here's it's like basically five was like a prequel, and you don't even know it until the end. Yeah, so that's cool. But he didn't do five. He did one and three. Three was three D. I'm pretty sure. I think that's the roller coaster. Ooh. I don't know. Those are fucking bad movies. And Dragon Ball was a bad movie. And this script was fucking terrible. Fuck this guy. Just Hope he fuck burns all in hell. This shit. Burn in hell with all your shit. It's so bad. I still think you should read it. <laughs> but I it's will. so bad. Um, but all right. We've gone long. This has been. I'm sorry I made you watch this movie. God. I should watch it just to make it even. Yes. But, uh. No, you need to watch Hell Comes to Frogtown. I'll watch Hell Comes to Frogtown. That's a fair trade. Watch that this weekend. Uh, if I can get it this weekend. I want to watch Doctor Strange this weekend. So. That's fair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> treat, right. treat yourself um, before you yeah. kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to promote Twitter? Anything? Anything you got coming out? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I do. I run a professional wrestling organization out of Chicago. We are called Freelance Wrestling. Uh,. I don't know when this is going to be airing, so I'm not going to tell you when our next show it's, is. It's not airing until January. So. Okay, so yeah. Uh, don't even worry about that. <laughs> but if you want to buy stuff from us, uh, DVDs, T-shirts, anything, yeah. uh, FreelanceWrestling.com is your one-stop shop for all that bullshit. Yeah. Uh, and and check then, out some free matches on YouTube. Even. Yeah, on YouTube, search Freelance Wrestling. You can see a bunch of stuff on there. And then uh, just follow me on Twitter at the Matt Nix, T H E M A T T K N I C K S. And freelance has a Twitter as well. Yeah, right? at, at freelance, freelance Res. Res. W R E S. only have so many letters. And as always, you can follow the show at, at Shelved Podcast. You can email us at shelvedfilmpodcast at gmail.com. I'm finally saying the right email. So in the first <laughs> couple episodes, I was saying the wrong email. Um, and we do have the Tumblr, shelledfilmpodcast.tumblr.com, where we post the scripts for our next episodes when we launch our mini episode. So, Nick, thanks for sitting with me and talking about this shitty movie and this shitty script. God damn, I need um, to take a shower. Yeah, seriously, I feel gross. And, um, thank, yeah, thanks for sitting with me. Thanks for having me. All right, have a good one. Bye.